speaker. The next speaker is um, he'll be sharing about how data-driven experiential marketing is changing the brand and consumer relationship. We have Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Okay, thank you so much for joining us in Marketing in the New Normal uh, Online Summit. And uh, he's the Managing Director of ADA Ada Malaysia. So you'll be sharing about um, the changes of the brand and the consumer relationship and uh, because of the data driven experiential marketing. And anytime when you're ready, you can take it away. And the last 15 minutes, we'll be uh, asking questions. We'll be answering the questions, and that's fine with you. Yeah, sure. No worries. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. So, um, yeah, as just explained, um, I'm going to sort of spend the next 25, 30 minutes to try to take uh, take all you guys through how data-driven uh, marketing is is changing the brand and consumer relationship. Um, what I've what I've done though is I've, I've actually constructed a bit of process simulation. Um, so rather than me sort of sitting here and uh, and and sort of telling and banging on about uh, I think that the elephant in the room, um, I've actually crafted some uh, some way forward that hopefully some of uh, some of you guys may be able to adopt, are adopting um, or um, have aspirations to adopt a data driven strategy to your uh, to your current business. Um, so it isn't hopefully not going to be death by PowerPoint. Um, I hope it's very engaging. Um, and we'll, we'll sort of jump into it. So just a little bit about ADA. Um, so ADA, we are uh, analytics data advertising. Um, we are part of the um, Axiata group, um, who also have the uh, the telcos throughout Southeast Asia, South Asia. The telco here in uh, in Malaysia is obviously Cellcom and the MVNO you do. Um, and we've been in existence for the last two, two and a bit years. Um, we have sort of transitioned from a media agency now to a fully fledged analytics data and advertising agency. And the reason why is that analytics and data are now powering the communications um, that we put into the market. And if they're not, they need to be. Um, so we sort of pivoted a fairly, fairly early, uh, a little bit before ahead of our time, um, and made a significant investment into um, building our DMP. And you'll hear me talk about a DMP. So a DMP is a data management platform uh, that we've invested in. So basically, it's just that one single hub of all data sets um, that we purchase first, second, and third party data sets. Um, we equally have as many um, data scientists than we have at operations personnel at ADA. We have 50 data scientists at ADA, um, and we also have actually 50 at operations uh, executives and managers. So it goes to show that, um, you know, businesses are now investing into um, into data science um, and, and actually giving it a meaningful way um, of becoming part of their business. So we've done that fairly early, as I said, a little bit ahead of our time. Um, and what we're really now seeing is obviously the benefits of, um, of, of, our, of, our, of our early investment. Uh, we're very good. Uh, we had Facebook on just before. We are a Facebook partner um, and a, a Facebook preferred partner. We're very good at digital media communications and digital media uh, advertising. Um, but now we bring a, a bit more of a strategic uh, lens uh, through the use of data and the understanding of how analytics can play into that. So that's a little bit of an opening, guys. Um, just a little bit about where we sit and who we are. And what I'll do is I'll jump into I'll jump into the into the presentation. Um, and as I said, this is a little bit of a different route. As I said, it's a it's a it's a process simulation. Um, and yeah, we'll get going. Okay, great. So I think the biggest question is what is data driven marketing? Um, and as simply as I can possibly put it, is data driven marketing refers to the methodology of extracting actionable insights tied to consumer behavior from large data sets in order to predict consumer behavior in relation to new products, marketing positioning, and users' likelihood of interacting with a brand. Now, I think that is a very articulate way <laughs> to say what is data-driven marketing, uh, but if, if, if anyone sort of gets pulled up in a, in a, in a lift um, and they've got, you know, that 11 seconds, that's what I'd like to think that data-driven marketing um, refers to. It's crazy that data-driven marketing is not new. Um, we make data-driven decisions since we were born. Uh, we, you know, and those decisions were acting on instinct. 
acting on experience, acting on historic, acting on words that were passed down uh, from mothers and fathers and the like. So we've actually been doing it for, for a long time. Um, I think right now it's probably becoming more, uh, more crucial for businesses as we go through and we look at very much our, our ROI and optimising our spends. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, gone to the days of the, the shotgun approach where we can just, you know, fire a bullet and, and hope, hope it hits something. Um, I think that that's very much approach is gone, especially with such a strong presence of digital media um, and the accessibility now to, to obviously smartphones and, and obviously a speed of connection to the internet has opened up a, a huge opportunity for, for brands and businesses the like. Uh, both in Southeast Asia and obviously all across the world. More importantly, we're seeing it more so um, in, uh, in Southeast Asia with the progression and the, the development of um, smartphone penetration and, and internet connectivity. Uh, so this becomes extremely powerful. So that's what I like to think data-driven marketing is. Uh, everyone has different opinions, uh, but I, I'd like to sort of summarise it in that realm. So I guess the next question that I sort of want to want to answer is who is driving the change in the relationship between brands and consumers? Um, and simply, it's 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 personalization. Uh, probably not the response that you guys were anticipating or thinking, but it literally is simple as that. Personalization, personalization, sorry, is driving the change between relationship and brands. People want to be spoken to as if they're the most important person in the room because they're the customer. And they interact with brands and they will get the majority, uh, the, the majority of the, the customer experience needs to be bespoke to that person. Uh, it needs to be bespoke to that person on particular behaviour traits that they may have or show, um, interests that they may have, um, you know, places of interest that they may go, uh, topics that they may search. Uh, topics that they may be interested in, lifestyle, um, I guess, lifestyle points of where they are in their particular life, which, which we don't get from demographical information, uh, nor do we get from psych uh, psychographic inf uh, information as well. We need to dig deeper uh, into, into our customers and really understand what I like to call personas. So what are the personas that make up of these, make these people who they are? Um, everyone's different. Everyone's unique. Everyone marches to a different beat. But if we can, if we can get to a point where we understand our customer and we understand our, our uh, prospective customer in a way that they are the most important person in the room and we address them that realm, you will see the adoption and you will see the uptake uh, from that particular desired group to your brand. Um, there's no question about that. So for me, uh, once again, uh, this is my opinion, uh, but for me, personalization is driving the change in the relationship. Brands like to think they're in control and the customer likes to think that they're in control. Well, unfortunately, in my opinion, that's not the case. Um, it's, it's those who seek and it's those who uh, supply personalization um, will win. So I guess the what, the who, and now the how, uh, back to you know, Marketing 101, is how personalization is driving data-driven marketing. And this is where I sort of want to delve into uh, a little bit of what I'll cover, cover today. So I look at it in three very simplistic fashions. Uh, the first one, data, obviously. But what is it about data and what do we look for in data? Now, for the particular uh, data-driven marketing initiatives that we're speaking about today, it's the people inside. So it's, it's what is that actionable insight or what is the insight to the particular target group that we're going after? Are we going after a target audience of, say, the M10, you know, which have completely and utterly different people insights, behaviours, uh, interests than potentially the M7 market, where that they are more aspirational, coming through life, potentially a bit more able to be more flexible uh, in terms of the digital transformation and, and digital adoption. But what is the people insight of our particular target audience that we, we need to dig into? 
right? So once we have that, once we have a broad understanding of that people insight, we're able then to jump into the creative, which is the ad. So it's all well and great to have the insight of the, of, of the particular target audience, uh, the deep understanding of those particular data sets. But if we don't have anything that's visually uh, or uh, vocal stimulating that speaks to them in the manner that we need to speak to them in, that speaks to them in the way that they, they, have, uh, they have paved their, their, their lifestyle, it, it won't mean anything. Um, data is just data, um, but if you don't know what to do with that data, nor that uh, that people insight, it will literally fall flat on its face. So we take those, I call them those those little gold nuggets um, that we do through uh, understanding the people insight, and then we're able to formulate a, a, you know a very attractive, a very appealing, and a very personalised uh, creative campaign um, to to feed into the market. And then, and then, lastly, uh, the last point that that I'll that I'll touch on is is media, um, and and that's basically the channels. So we just had Facebook uh, on just now, and they're speaking around a raft of different formats, different attribution models for different business outcomes. So once you've then got the understanding of the people inside, you understand the creative in terms of how you want to deliver your message. It's then understanding the channels that you do want to deliver. Uh, your particular uh, message on. Now, not all channels will be a one-size-fits-all. Um, you know, it's unfortunately corner of the day of, you know, uh, just putting up a, a TVC or, or a radio commercial. We have to consider the digital channels uh, and the raft and the absolute monstrosity of uh, choices um, that we have. The digital channels right now has probably been more hotter than ever. Um, for instance, uh, you've seen the boom of TikTok. Um, I've, you know, will pledge that I am not on TikTok, um, but I do understand the concept. It's user-generated content that people are, the people that are really now adopting. Um, it, but then also too, something like TikTok comes also with an ad platform. So how can your strategy uh, or your particular strategy or your client strategy that you're working on, how do they play a part in TikTok? And I guess it's it's understanding the audience that's on TikTok, marrying it to your people insight, and then looking at the innovative ways that you can display your message through your uh, through your creative. Um, so right now, the media side of it is is extremely interesting. Um, and what I'll do is through the presentation, we'll show you just some different avenues uh, that you can take. All right. So the fun stuff now is. What do we look at um, in terms of actually identifying a product? So many of you out there, I'm probably assuming, aren't in the industry of betting. Uh, I could probably guarantee that. But I wanted to take a very peculiar product um, and, and simulate that a little bit. So for this particular webinar, um, think of it if we are trying to create a communications campaign for a luxury, a luxury mattress uh, brand um, and obviously I won't go into who and why and all that but for this uh, for this particular webinar we're going to focus on the luxury mattress industry um, and I'd, I'd love to hear if anyone else on the uh, on the webinar after we finish is from this particular industry but it's very applicable across uh, across multiple Okay, so as I said, guys, we, I want to jump into a process simulation. So, so what I want to do with this is I want to give you a little bit of the of the how and how to create this in your own business, how to create this potentially with third parties or how to create this with potentially your agency or your prospective agency. Um, this is how we go through the process um, of, of crafting a data-driven uh, marketing strategy slash campaign slash execution uh, for our clients. Now, understandably, uh, some of you, most of you may not have access to particular um, tools and resources that something like an agency does have. Um, as I said, we've invested significant amounts of money into this, um, but there's other ways and means of collecting data. You guys will sit on a huge repository of your own consumer's data. Um, so that's a starting point as well. But it's just understanding, I guess, a little bit of the methodology and where to start and where to look at, okay? 
So the first, the first, uh, I guess the first point that we'll start at is the data, um, because ultimately the data will lead to, as I've just pointed out before, the creative uh, that then will also then lead to our, our media buying strategy as well. So let's really understand how to find the people insight in data. So this slide, guys, what it depicts here is a bit of a data methodology. So there's a lot going on here. So let me take it through, take, take you guys through this um, from, from left to right. So as I said, we are an, an analytic and data-driven um, advertising uh, organisation. Uh, as I said, we are a very AI-driven organisation as well, and we use those particular uh, points to, to be able to um, extract those meaningful insights and then put them obviously into a, into a communication strategy. So if we start from the left, uh, we actually have our own proprietary platform, uh, which is called our exact data management platform, which, as I said, houses a significant amount of data, um, generally from mobile exchanges. But as I said, it can come from first party data, it can come from second party data, and it can come from third party data sources. But generally, our data sets house a lot from the, uh, from the mobile exchange um, platforms in where, like you guys, we can go out and we can also, and you guys can also go out and purchase uh, this data from a, a raft of different aggregators. What we do is we actually then put the bottom line to it as having our, our data uh, scientists and engineers put, in, put, in this, put this in meaningful ways of extraction um, and then gives us our, I guess, our, our, our raw insight of the consumer. The other tools also too that we use is, is some video, video analytics tools. Um, that we have at our disposal as well. So um, that's another raft of analytics. So basically what people are watching, um, what some of the habits that people are watching on um, and, and, and the kind. And then obviously third-party data tools as well. So there's obviously, uh, I've only put some three three logos down here. Uh, global, uh, so GWI, Global Web Index, um, uh, Statistia is fantastic. Um, and then we also use a platform called TalkWalker, which is a uh, social listening, a data social listening tool, uh, which gives us extremely deep uh, sentiments of what people are saying about uh, specific keywords, specific brands um, on, on the raft of different social channels across, uh, across, across the world that we then can drill down for that specific market. So that's, that's I guess, the platforms and the tools that, that we utilise. Um, then I think what we then like to do is, is break it up and have a look at a few different different elements. So the, the first element that we'll look at is, is geo-targeting uh, potentially affluent residential area. Guys, where, 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 where the simulation here is for a, uh, a luxury mattress. Right? So we're actually trying to sell luxury mattresses to the prospective target audience. So what we'll generally do is we'll geo-target affluent re residential uh, areas and business areas. Why? is that people have a propensity and, and a behaviour to be in certain pockets in certain areas. Obviously, there's lower, there's, there's higher socioeconomic areas, there's medium socioeconomic areas, and there's lower socioeconomic areas. Through targeting, and then my next point down there, through, uh, through points of interest targeting or POI mapping, we like to call it, we're able to pick up those device IDs that we have in our, our data management platform. Now, those device IDs will give us an understanding and give us a, um, a bucket of people that actually, from an affluency perspective, are seen in the areas of where we would infer uh, affluent people who would be able to afford a luxury mattress uh, to be. Then, obviously, third one is app usage. So what we're able to see through our DMP is certain people's uh, usage of applications. So that's a very strong indicator of people's online behaviour and people's online interests, is what apps that they use. And also, too, to the weightage of they use those applications, which then help us also infer uh, certain different persona groups within that. And then secondly, second last is geofencing, as I said, high-end social and sporting outlets. So what we what we see through uh, high worth uh, net in, uh, high net worth individuals is generally they are a part of uh, clubs, they are a part of associations, social gatherings. Um, that could be, for a better example, could be TPC Kuala Lumpur. It could be sporting clubs such as uh, Raw Salungo Club. So what we like to do is we have over three and a half, four thousand uh, places of interest that we map throughout just Malaysia alone. 
where we're constantly seeing these device IDs popping up. So we track those device IDs in terms of frequency. And if they're constantly seen at these places and they're constantly seen at other places of interest that, that, revol that re revolve around affluency, we can then potentially, or sorry, we can actually then build our propensity modeling to say that these guys actually will fit into the bucket of a high net worth individual. And then I think the, the last one here is the video content consumption and data overview. So we consume a lot of video as, um, as individuals. You know, no matter what affluency you are or what socioeconomic status you are, we've gravitated towards a lot of video content. Now, so we, we look at actual usage of analytics tools and what people are actually consuming uh, on video. So what's that all mean? Uh, and once again, to the right-hand side, um, so geo-target affluent and residential business areas I touched on was affluence and occupation indicator. Geo-target points of interest, POI, interest and affinity indicator. Um, app usage and geofencing high and social sporting outlets is behavioral indicator. And video content consumption and data overview is, is a content insights. That's then obviously supported also too from additional supporting data that I spoke around from say GWI or TalkWalker um, that then basically gives us our audience insight. So what we're able to see is the device ID. We do not know, and you'll see the disclaimer down there, the device ID is fully uh, PDPA compliant, meaning we don't know any of these people's personal details. We just track simply the device. The device is what we what we track. We don't track anything else. We do not track their phone number, their email address, their name, anything like that. Everything is linked back to the device. Then it basically will give us, as I said, the persona group. So the persona group that we're actually trying to create here is high net worth individuals or HWNI, which, you know, as I said, we're acronym MAD. And then from that, we're able to ascertain certain behavior indicators, yeah, which then obviously can go on and help us through 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 the positioning of our of our campaign. And then lastly is our touch points. So so what touch points and where where are some of the affinities that we can actually reach these people? The beautiful thing about device ID extraction is, as we said, we just had Facebook on before. You can actually extract those device IDs, upload those device IDs to a, a Facebook uh, campaign, and then use those device IDs to match those Facebook IDs and then create that audience segment and then deliver your communications on, on, on Facebook itself. That allows us then to create a much more, uh, I guess, sniper approach to, to going out and to actually finding uh, high net worth individuals, once again, to sell luxury mattresses too. So my next slide is what we like to call an inferred persona. So as I said, I just sort of spoke about high net worth individuals. So what certain data points or people insights do we actually get from all these data, that data that we just spoke about? So as I said, there's probably a lot going on on this slide, um, but what it does is it gives us very high level demographical information, um, potentially marital, uh, marital status as well, uh, parental status, um, because as I said, we can infer based on people's behaviour, based on based on their their online uh, their online behaviour indicators. Uh, also, we can infer job. Um, so, what kind of job that these guys are at, uh, based on places of interest that they potentially go to. Home location. Um, don't know their street number, um, but an office location. But once again, through uh, through POI mapping, we're able to see how really that particular device may be. Um, in that particular area. Of course, if it's seen, you know, uh, Monday to Sunday um, between the hours of when we're actually home, we can then we can then infer that that is exactly their home location. Similar to their work location and office location, once again, using POI mapping, we're able to infer that if that device ID has been seen, say, Monday to Friday in uh, Montiara at a certain office building, we can infer that that's their particular uh, office location. Once again, additional supporting data. Um, so this is what we picked up through the use of social listening. We like to call this good old fashioned strategy and planning, um, you know, or, or research and our due diligence. So what we found from social listening and social sentiments is there's strong negative sentiments around sleep um, currently right now. So our keyword that we tracked for this particular uh, simulation was the keyword sleep. Um, spikes are due to Malaysians complaining about their inability to sleep and being, being sleep deprived. 
Conversation triggers, uh, Chinese New Year, vacation, back to work. Common themes that we saw, uh, insomnia, sleep, stress, work, sleep deprivation, health, medical and conditions. And some of the actionable insights that we took out of that this particular data set was sleep is, is on uh, Malaysians top of mind. Existing awareness and association between everyday life, sleeping patterns and sleeping disorders. We know that Malaysia, I, I think that's still relevant, is the, is the fourth most uh, overworked country in the world. So I can imagine there's a lot of, uh, a lot of us who live in Malaysia uh, are very much sleep deprived. So that gave us that little bit of supporting data. So then we looked at different data points for extraction. Uh, we looked at places of interest. Uh, have these device IDs been seen at luxury auto showrooms, golf and country clubs, high-end restaurants, luxury travel destinations? Uh, do they stay in expensive neighbourhoods? Um, different app categories that they may be consuming uh, more of, finance, stock, trading, forex. Um, do they belong to any other existing segments, upscale shoppers, golf fans, uh, air travellers, um, and the like? So that gives us some data points of extraction. Then we look at some of our behaviours of this of these particular, uh, the particular persona group, right? So they like to wake up early for fitness. They're heavy readers. They're driven to improve mental and intellectual performance, willing to spend to better oneself. Usually key decision makers, uh, they usually are the key decision makers in their family and excessive travel schedule. So, so this is, gives us, once again, some of the behavioural traits that we know. And then we back it up with a little bit of proof point. So what's some of the factual stuff that's out, in, out, out there at the moment? Well, sleep correlates with performance and success. Higher cognitive capacity reduces risk of developing mental and physical disorders, better mood regulation. So, so with all that now, we can infer a persona around a high net worth individual, but this gives us some extremely powerful, uh, powerful um, uh, gold nuggets to go out and create our, our creative campaign. And the beautiful thing about this is this particular persona that we've inferred, there is 1.87 million device IDs that we do have in our DMP that we're able to target which is fantastic. So getting on to the creative. So, so if we, we have to create the concept, there's, there's three main elements that we get to to get us to our strategic push. The truth that individuals share, the truth of moment, and the truth of brand. So what we do is we take those data sets, we take all everything that we've got, that we've done, and we basically now put it in terms of a strategic push. So I won't read... Uh, uh, all the truths that we have here. But basically, in summary, the strategic push that we will create our, our creative campaign will be the hook of indulge the luxury of sleep to optimise your performance. So if we look at the creative proposition, brand X mattress, you'll achieve a sleep so deep and so curative that you'll wake up refreshed and ready to push forward to be a success to be successful in life. So that's our creative proposition. Next, what we jump into is our creative expression, right? So many, uh, many high achievers adopt the work hard and rest smart mantra. They'll be relentless in work and life, but when it's time to rest, they would not want to sleep deeply in the short time they have. Not snooze, doze, nap, nor any lie up from sleep, but deep and curative slumber that you'll wake up from fully refreshed and ready to grab what life has to offer. So our, our, our creative expression is don't sleep, slumber. Because everybody sleeps, not everyone slumbers. Which then leads us to what we like to call from the creative expression to our big idea. So guys, I hope I'm really taking you through the process simulation of understanding how data started this particular creative expression that then lead us to our creative big idea. So we found from our data that, th that high, uh, high net worth individuals want a certain thing. They want a certain realm out of, their, out of sleep. What is it? So we have to come with a proposition that's going to tick all their boxes. So then that just gets us on to the last piece of the media, um, so the channels. So if we look at a very, a very high-level media strategy, uh, using the three-step approach, which we all know about, um, to create top-of-mind recall about Brand X amongst users to drive consideration about Brand X mattresses and drive traffic to Brand X store by consistent and relevant remarketing efforts. 
So the three-step process that we'll go through here is awareness to drive awareness via uh, prospecting, consideration, drive consideration and engagement, and then conversions. So how do we actually get these people either to, because this particular brand doesn't have an online store, how do we get them to actually walk into a store and actually purchase? So there's the three-step process uh, of what we will do uh, with our media approach and media strategy. And then I think lastly, as I've, I'm almost out of time, lastly is what would that customer journey look like? So as I said here, we've got, a, we've got three different phases between awareness, consideration, and conversion. Channel, so what channels would this particular affluent market be going after? YouTube is one, Facebook and Insta is another. Programmatic is a fantastic way to get data-driven marketing initiatives out in the market. Clearly, Google Display and Search is another huge point and a huge channel for us. And then, obviously, we look at Facebook and Insta again. But every channel will play its role in every phase of the way of what we're wanting to go through. I've even done here a bit of a simulation, guys, for ad formats. So you'll see a lot of video ads and a lot of collection ads, and you'll see a lot of different kind of ad sets to drive the use and to, to be visually stimulating and engaging to these particular people because that's what they require. So much static and not so much moving parts and ads, we found that will not actually resonate to that particular market. So then what we want to do is we want to drive them through to Brand X's website and then hopefully push them through to the showroom visit, which then can lead to a purchase. If they haven't purchased, which we can track through O2O, which is online to offline attribution, we put them into the remarketing funnel and we go for another uh, round of conversions to try to, to, try to uh, remarket and engage these particular people back into uh, Brand X's uh, store. So, guys, thank you. Uh, that's that's all from me. Um, I think we're about to jump into a QA. and um, and I hope you guys found that extremely um, valuable. Um, I know there's a lot of information to take in there, um, but as I said, uh, data-driven marketing and data-driven um, experiential marketing is not easy to do. Um, it's very hard to do. It's very daunting to take that first step. But the beautiful thing about it, guys, is that you guys sit on a plethora of data now. It's just how do you extract the best use out of that data and then how can that data form part of your everyday marketing and communication strategy? Okay, that's enough from me. Okay. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you so much for sharing your inputs on this topic. And uh, we'll take in questions. And uh, there's no questions over so far, but I'll just ask for questions. Uh, to everyone who's watching, if you have any question to Adrian, do put it in the comment section below so that we can uh, get him to answer any particular um, question that you want to cover. Do let us know in the comment section, then we can help to uh, cover it. Um, apart from that, um, very nice presentation, Adrian. Thank you so much. And uh, I think you had a bit of a short of time, but you managed to finish it on time. So thank you so much. No problem. And if anyone needs, <laughs> All right. anyone needs Come again? you can share my, my, if anyone would like me for their information or, um, you know, from, from myself, you can share my email address mm -hmm. with the, with the, uh, okay. with the attendee. I'm happy to, uh, okay. happy to have that. Okay. Um, can we have your email address and maybe we can uh, put it into the oh, comment section yeah. and uh, they can uh, email you directly. I, it's just adrian.burton at ada-asia.com. Um, is it possible to put it into the private chat then we can just copy and paste it into the uh, live comments? Okay. okay. Now, there we go. All right. Um, we'll, we'll post out Adrian's email. So, if you guys have any question, do put it into um, the comment section. If you do, if you want to ask Adrian any question, do email him personally, and uh, I think you can take it from there. Okay, fantastic. 
All right. Uh, with that, thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you so much for joining us in marketing in the new normal marketing fest. Very, very uh, glad to have you on board. It's a it's a great pleasure to listen to you share a very detailed explanation about everything that you shared. So thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Exabytes. Grow your business online.